Welcome to Quantum Projects. Today, I'm gonna build a pretty lame smartwatch and tell you why you should too. So it all started about two months ago. As I wrapped up my sophomore year of college, wait, I'm halfway done with college? I knew I wanted to build something new. I had all sorts of ideas, from a swerve drive go-kart to another robotic arm. Fast forward six weeks though, and I had pretty much nothing. For one reason or another, the projects all died before they even really got off the ground. Every idea I had seemed impossible. I was starting to hit a wall, and uh, well, I had to do something. So I had this half-baked idea to build a smartwatch that used an e-paper display, with the main selling point being the tremendous battery life due to the low current draw of e-paper displays. I spontaneously decided to buy the display to force myself to at least start working on something. Now, if you look closely at the final device, it doesn't exactly have an e-paper display on it, and, uh, well, that requires some explaining. So after the e-paper display showed up, I thought, oh, what the heck, I've invested $20 into this, I might as well just do it. So I dreamed up a schematic in my head without drawing anything on paper, ordered a bunch of parts haphazardly, and waited. The watch would be amazing. It would charge based off of the heat on your skin using a thermoelectric generator, use supercapacitors instead of batteries, and it would use an e-paper display, meaning you would really never have to charge it. It didn't even need an on-off switch because it was always gonna be active. But then the trouble began. See, if I had let this idea play out in my head a little more, I would have realized that a lot of the hardware was kind of incompatible in a kind of nerdy way that I'm not gonna go too much into. However, if I had stopped to think about it a little more, would I have ordered the parts and gotten going in the first place? Honestly, probably not. Although my dreams of this grand watch were shattered into oblivion, at this point I had some parts and I was like, okay, what the heck? I might as well just see it to completion. So I dreamed up a new solution. And this time I drew the schematic in Excel, everyone's favorite circuit board designer. Before ordering the parts this time, I triple checked my schematic to make sure that nothing would break, which didn't exactly go to plan. Smartwatch V2 would have an OLED display, a battery instead of those supercapacitors, and three buttons, and it would have the ability to do all sorts of things. I envisioned this thing playing a couple of games. Um, well, that was really the only differentiating feature, but yeah, you know, hey, cool, watch the complacent game. It would also have a settings menu and a flashlight. I put the flashlight on there because I was like, okay, well, I've gotten rid of the low power supercapacitors. I might as well put something that, you know, sucks some real juice. And plus, wouldn't it be cool if you could just kind of, well, actually, the real reason I put the flashlight on there is because my apartment doesn't have any lights. This version differed a lot from the original one, but it was still quite cool, so I was really excited to build it. When the parts arrived, I got to work. I set them up on a breadboard, loaded up a demo, and uh, voila, we had the screen working and the buttons too. Next step was to make the circuit board. Now this part was really hard. This took like five hours. I I've never soldered something this tiny. You know, you know, if you look at the old videos on this channel, you'll see I used to build a lot of drones, and those did require some soldering, but this was extreme. However, after that five hours, I plugged it in and, uh, well, it worked. Here goes nothing. <gasps> but then, disaster. That should do it. I'm gonna do this live in one take. All right, here we go. Oh, come on. It's dead. Turns out I made an error designing the circuit, which may or may not have led to the microcontroller receiving 5 volts on a 3.3 volt pin. And, uh, yeah. Excel's not the best for designing circuits. I was devastated. I, I really did consider quitting for a little while, but, you know, then again, I've invested all this time and money into this thing, so I might as well keep going, because, like, why not? I ordered some replacement parts for the ones that I broke, and drew a much nicer schematic in GoodNotes, everyone's favorite circuit board design software. This schematic was much more compact and easier to solder at the same time. I also fixed some stupid things on the V2, like a voltage divider that pumped five volts into a 3.3 volt pin. This watch would incorporate all the same features as the V2, so I really should call it a V2.5. Um, it was basically the exact same thing, but this time I was gonna make it work. So I retested all the components on the breadboard and uh, got soldering on the circuit. This time it only took around two hours, which is a good sign. And uh, then, Tested it out, worked again, but I plugged in the battery and uh, this time it didn't blow up. Let's go. So at this point, I finally had a pile of watch cuts that worked and thank God the circuit part was over because I really don't like circuits, man. So then I got to work designing a case or six and packed it all up into an extremely compact and ergonomic design. I wrote some basic timekeeping code, plugged it into my computer to let it run and uh, went away for about two hours. Then I got back 
and you guessed it, disaster. It couldn't keep time. So it turns out I bought the only microcontroller in the entire world that doesn't feature a real-time clock circuit. Are you serious? What am I supposed to do now? I'll pull the time from the internet just like phones and laptops do. Oh, but then I realized my watch with like eight kilobytes of RAM couldn't exactly access Wi-Fi. Should've seen that one coming. Also, it didn't have an on-off switch, and at this point I was kind of prepared to admit defeat to the whole it's on forever type thing, because yeah, my tests showed it had around an hour and a half of battery life, and uh, yeah, you don't want that. Also, if you turned it off, it lost the time. So I ordered some more parts, took it apart for about the 400th time, installed those new parts, including a real-time clock circuit, which had its own backup battery on it, meaning that even if I turned it off, it would keep the time, and better yet, it would keep the time well. Actually, funny story, I briefly considered just kind of like not caring about the fact that it couldn't keep time and like pushing onward, but then I was like, it's like, what the heck else could I use this watch for? So I put those new parts in there, but uh, then uh, you guessed it, disaster struck again. The code sucked. This part I wasn't too surprised about though, because I'm not exactly the best programmer. At first, I thought it was a problem with the hardware, which really sucked because I was not about to dive back into circuit land and remake this thing for a third time. So I was I was really ready to give like I was really ready to give up this time. Then I found this random dude's code online that was for essentially an identical circuit. I was like, okay, let me just throw this on the watch and see if it works. And it did like perfectly. So I borrowed this kind gentleman's code, which I've also linked in the description, by the way. Thanks, man. Modified it to uh, record battery levels and called it a day. Behold, the not so smart, not so watch, smartwatch. A marvel of technology. It costs more than an Apple watch, has less battery life than your gaming laptop, and tells the time about as well as literally anything else on Amazon, including this entire list of $20 smartwatches that I found. But hey, at least it has a flashlight. Ugh. Oh. Yeah, it sucks. I wore this watch in public yesterday and I literally had to take it off because it was so embarrassing. I mean, look at it. It's huge. Why would anyone wear this? Have you noticed the plate that I screwed on that blocks one of the USB ports? Yeah, so that's there because if you actually turn the watch on and plug a cable into that port at the same time, you're gonna blow up the battery. Th there's no way to avoid this. Well, there probably is, but I'm not smart enough to figure that out. I mean, wh why? Why would anyone want this? Why would I even build it? I'll bet you're thinking I really regret it. I don't. Am I gonna wear this watch? Heck no. Am I gonna use it for literally anything? Also, no. In fact, I'm sending it to my dad because I don't even want to use it at all. I don't want to look at this thing anymore. I still don't regret making it. Why? You see, diving headfirst into something without really knowing what the heck is going on is by far the best way to learn about it. If you stop to think about whether or not you can do it, or if it's even worth your time, you're just not gonna do it. Do you think that I thought that I could make a better watch than Apple or Samsung as a Sophomore in college who's not even studying electrical engineering? Of course not. That wasn't the point of this project, and it never was. You see, my day job is working on rockets, and the research that I've done in the past revolves around robotics. So why build a smartwatch? Well, the real reason is to learn about how to build a smartwatch. Or more specifically, the things that go into making a smartwatch. Because it turns out a lot of them are applicable to a lot more than just smartwatches. This project taught me about circuit design, I squared C interfaces, real-time clocks, C programming, and various electrical circuits like voltage dividers, just to name a few. I mean, I can use these skills to make much more interesting projects than Smart. This isn't a smartwatch. Let's just let's just call it what it is. A useless brick that keeps time pretty well. Yeah, this this project yielded a pretty lame watch, but you know, real final product was the knowledge I gained along the way. And that sounds like super cheesy, but it's true. If you watch some of my other videos on this channel, you'll see that not all my projects work out amazingly. But this is just the start of my lifelong goal to be an engineer. And you know. It's gotta start somewhere. If you ask me, a failed project is really only failed if you gain nothing of value from it. And I gained a lot of value from this project. I plan on using the skills that I learned from this project to build a way cooler device, um, which I'll probably post about in 10 to 20 years. So if you're interested in seeing that, get subscribed and I will see you then. Thanks for watching.